what we're working on today is a uh, Chevy Duramax 6.6 with the Allison transmission. Uh, this particular vehicle, it would um, get stuck in third gear quite a bit and wouldn't come out unless you reset the computer. Then it would work good for uh, maybe 10 miles, maybe 5, maybe 20. It, you know, is fairly inconsistent. Another problem it had was whenever it was in park, the starter would try to engage. Uh, sometimes as soon as you turn the key in the own position it would start cranking and then it would kick out and it would crank some more it was very intermittent and even whenever it was running if it was in park the starter would try to engage off and on so um, so the uh, position switch I went and got a new one so that's what we're going to change today so I'll be showing you how to do that and I'm kind of in a hurry with this one so I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll explain a little bit more about it later. Alright, I was going to try to set this up on a tripod. Or, and I really couldn't find a good way to position the camera to where I could do it while filming. So, I'm go th I'll tell you the steps on what to do and uh, then I'll show you the finished product. So anyways, your uh, shift linkage, this, is, uh, this comes off very easily. You can, I can probably actually take this one off with my hand yep it just snaps off if you have trouble though take a small pair of needle nose pliers and stick behind there and just kind of pry out the screwdriver just wherever you can get in there it's not really that tight um, I think this nut right here is a 15 millimeter and be a hundred percent sure that your truck is scotched uh, if the park brake works at the park brake and scotch it uh, you know you do not want this uh, truck rolling over you whenever you uh, take it out of the park so anyways um, like I say take a 15 millimeter wrench or socket uh, take this nut off and keep in mind it's in park now but whenever you go to loosen this it will come out of park and if it's not scotched up it'll roll over top of you so just uh, giving you a big safety tip right there so once you take that nut off this arm will come off and if it's really rusted, uh, if the shaft on here is really rusted, then take some emery cloth, uh, belt, sandpaper, something like that, and just polish that down because it'll make life a lot easier for you when you're taking a switch, pulling it off of the shaft. And also, it uh, wouldn't hurt to uh, squirt some PB blaster or, or some kind of whatever fin favorite penetrating oil is. Um, these connectors, a lot of people have trouble out of these connectors uh, not coming off. Um, this one and this one. And the reason why is from the factory they put some kind of epoxy or glue in those and um, if you just try to uh, you know take a screwdriver or just pull it or work it off you'll you'll bust them all to pieces uh, very seldom do they come off uh, and not be damaged without doing this trick I'm about to tell you but what you want to do is you want to get a heat gun and set it on low setting and uh, slowly go over these two connectors and don't get them too hot because uh, you know these uh, plastic connectors will melt <clears throat> melt pretty easy with a heat gun so what you want to do is uh, heat them up until the resin just starts to uh, come out of it or if you want to uh, heat them up for a few seconds and try them every now and then but anyways just take a heat gun uh, you know gently heat them up and they'll eventually uh, turn loose and you can just feel the glue turn into just a uh, you know like a thick runny paste and you can just pull them off so after those two connectors are off there's a 13 millimeter head bolt right here and one between these two connectors so you just take those two bolts off and then you can pull the switch off and now it'll still be kind of a tight fit on this shaft so just to kind of wiggle and uh you know just wiggle and fight with it there a little bit uh, don't get too impatient it'll eventually come off for you and uh, let me go ahead and take the switch off and I'll show you the steps to uh, putting it back on the right way. Alright, so I've got the switch off. Um, now this is a brand new switch. It's not a junkyard switch or anything. So, um, it's, let me show you. Kind of hard to do while I'm under the vehicle, but, okay now, I'm going to get up under show Anyways, if you look at the switch, you'll notice that there's a little silver bar. And what it is is that there is a 
there's two little notches right here that this goes into and uh, <clears throat> once this is put on you actually take this off and throw it away all this is is a placeholder because from the factory they set this in the neutral position and then they lock it in place with this, a little uh, metal bar so uh, what you want to do is on the transmission itself on the shaft that goes through it's got a little flat slot so you'll take a uh, I take a pair of small cres uh, crescent wrench and put it on the shaft you want to turn it <clears throat> clockwise all the way over until it quits turning then you want to back it up two clicks <clears throat> which will you know so you want rotate it all the way over clockwise until it stops back it up two clicks or two detents and that will put you in a neutral position so that way uh, there's a small slot in here it's uh, not a perfect circle so that allows this to lock onto the shaft and whenever you back it up two notches you're putting it in neutral and this lock keeps this in a neutral position so you can slide it directly on and if you notice the bolts that hold it to the transmission are slotted for adjustment so after you put the switch on you put these two bolts in and uh, you snug them up but you leave it loose enough where you can still move this back and forth and what you want to do is uh, whenever you get get this in here just uh, temporarily plug up your connectors and whenever you pull the gear selector down in neutral you want to make sure the light moves into the R position for reverse I mean and if you move the uh, shift lever over to neutral or drive you want to make sure the light goes into the neutral or drive position if it doesn't then you have to it helps if you got somebody to sit up front and watch but if it doesn't just put it in neutral or drive and move this until the indicator goes to the gear you're wanting it to go in on the indicator so say if you're in uh, say if you put it in drive but it's shown to be neutral we well twist this one way or the other until it goes into the drive position on the indicator and then once it's there you tighten this bolt down then you unplug these two connectors again so you can get to that bolt tighten it down plug up the two connectors and you're basically done except for uh you know putting the uh, shift lever arm on but you've got to go that far just to be able to uh select the gears anyways so let me see if i can uh film some of how i do this all right so here's the lever i was telling you about so what you want to do is you want to grab grab the notch and you want to go all the way clockwise until it stops and then you want to back it up two detents one two and that will put you in a neutral position and actually if you look on the case of the transmission they've actually stamped uh, where the indicator what the indicator or shaft should look like when it's in a neutral position but that's kind of hard to go by with the uh, transmission in the truck so let me slide the switch on and uh, I'll show you the rest of it. All right, I've got the switch on. Uh, I had to clean that shaft up a little bit and put a little grease on there too, because uh, that switch is a pretty tight fit on it. But as you can see, this uh, little metal uh, neutral indicator for the switch that comes on it from the factory, it just pops off. And once the switch is on there, so you can just throw that away. I put the lever back on there, tightened it down, and the shift cable, it just snaps on there. No big deal. So I'm going to uh, plug the two connectors up and uh, calibrate this, and I'll show you the next steps in this. All right, so we're up here in the cab, and uh, I've got the key on. This is what I meant by uh, you have to may have to calibrate it because of the slotted bolt holes in the switch. So as you see, key's on, and luckily I got it first time, so I didn't have to mess with it at all. But if you pull it down one notch, yeah, it's uh. The detent went into neutral and the indicator shows to be in neutral so or reverse i mean and then neutral drive third second and first so it's adjusted right so what i'm going to do now is just tighten up the two bolts that hold the switch to the transmission so it won't move and make sure on two connectors uh, you know i have to unplug the one connector get to the back bolt plug it back up but uh anyways i'll after that, I'll show you the next step to uh, finishing up the uh, replacement of that switch. All right, now that we've got the new switch on there, calibrating everything, what we want to do is take a OBD2 scanner and 
cleared the codes. Um, this is a 2001. I've done it all the way up to, I think it was 2003. So uh, you can erase transmission codes with just a regular OBD2 scanner on these. Um, as far as calibrating and changing shift points and stuff, uh, you know, I don't know if just a regular scanner would do it or not. I doubt it. But what you want to do is go ahead and erase codes. Code, yes. Okay, so the codes are cleared now. So, what I'm going to do is actually test drive this. And <clears throat> a few instances I've had whenever I've changed these switches is uh, within the first couple miles, they'll uh, go back into I think it's safe mode or limp mode in a transmission. It will it'll stay stuck in third or fourth gear depending on what transmission you have but um, what we'll do is test drive this for a while <clears throat> and uh, like I say in some cases after a new switch was put on I, I'm kind of thinking that the uh, computer the TCM transmission control module has to go through a uh, small relearning process and uh, so I've had to do before is even though the new switch was on there it would limp back into third and I would have to reset the computer again, then it would be fine. And, they, you know, the owner would never have any more trouble out of it. So, um, like I say, sometimes if you replace that switch and you clear the codes, you may have to clear them again if it, uh, you know, if it uh, starts acting up again and acting all weird. They do, sometimes when that switch goes out, they do different stuff. Most of the time it will go into limp mode. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. Uh, erase the codes, test drive it, see if they come back, if they come back again, erase them, and it should have it, now if they keep coming back, then you might want to look into other issues, uh, like shift solenoids, uh, and then, you know, a bunch of other stuff, it could be output speed sensors, and turbine speed sensors, and all that good stuff, so I'm going to uh, test drive this, and we'll go to the next project, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe.